All right, guys, I got another one. Don't know where this comes from. Maybe Watch King, could be eBay, Amazon. You know how it goes. One of those. Let's see, it's smaller, so I'm not expecting it to be a really expensive one, but probably at least a $100 watch, we'll see. We'll see. Maybe an Invicta, maybe an Ingersoll, an older Ingersoll. I don't know, what am I cutting here? Sorry for the shaking. I don't know what this one is. Not a box I've seen before. Can't be that high end. Okay, is this even a watch? Horex Italia. Well, that's wild. Do not know what that is. Interesting. Okay. I have no idea where this one came from. Wow, that's actually very nice. I kind of like that. Very cool looking. I can't imagine it's that expensive, but this is nice. I definitely like. All right, I'll see if I can find a video. Otherwise, this will be pretty quick. We're here in Las Vegas at the Las Vegas Watch and Jewelry Shows, and we are here to share with the retailers and the press the wonderful new collections from the brands in the Javril Group portfolio. We have high-end heritage brands such as Javril that go all the way back to the 1700s, 1758, and then we have really great new exciting fashion watch projects like Rebel Brooklyn and everything in between. We have a lot to offer and a lot to show, and we're really excited to get this show started. I'm the brand manager and designer of the RX brand, I basically uh, designed a product that is uh, multi-layered. The RX brand is a you know, very sporty looking. It is really important to also have a story for ladies that should be at least 25 to 30 percent of the collection. The styles that I designed into are, I think, very unique and definitely have a place in the market. The reaction of the, of the, the market at the moment is quite positive because uh, uh, a lot of people already know the brands Jovril or GV2 and there was a good opportunity to introduce all the other brands that we have like Aurex, Joan Eric, uh, as well as Caliber and uh, Rudiger. It's been really exciting here in Vegas this year. Great stories to share with our retail partners about the success in the U.S. market and how much it's grown and the great response that we've gotten from the U.S. customers. We at the Jibril Group are very excited because we can help support our retailers with our wonderful portfolio of watch brands with luxury, fine, and fashion watches. And I think we're right where we, we thought we would be a year ago. All right. Hope you guys liked that video. Um, I spliced it up. It actually was a lot longer, but I didn't suppose you guys cared too much about the other brands. So just wanted to focus on Horex. <clears throat> so uh, I'm actually pretty impressed with this watch. Um, first thing I'm gonna talk about right off the bat, I just wanna talk about the movement because I think that's sort of a benefit. Now it is a quartz movement, it's not mechanical. I know a lot of the ones I show are mechanical, but this one is a quartz. Uh, it is the Ronda 1069. Um, and as you can see, it, it also has six jewels. The, uh, this is a, a Swiss made version. The Swiss parts version is nickel plated instead of gold plated, so that is gold plating. And uh, the Swiss parts version is only two jewels. So the accuracy, from what I understand, increases by about 10%. I mean, quartz movements are pretty good anyways, right? Uh, I don't know if you guys are aware, but if um, temperature changes, and heavy impact can affect the quartz movement. I mean, the quartz crystal is pretty well isolated, but it, it's based off the resonance uh, and the response that uh, maintains time. So, but it's pretty good. Now, first thing you'll notice about this watch, it has a sub second. Now, I think that's pretty cool. I actually like it, it's something a little different. Um, I wouldn't call this a sport watch. It really probably is more of a fashion watch, but you could certainly use it as a sport watch. Now, it's only, uh, and I'll just kind of go into it. It's only 30 meter water resistant, three ATM. And of course I'll put the chart up there at the top. Um, that is good enough for hand washing and uh, you can probably take a shower and even some light swimming. I don't know, you know, three ATM, maybe if it was five ATM, I'd feel a little more comfortable. I really, I really honestly think that most watches 
if you're going to do any kind of real sports with them or anything that involves water, it really needs to be at least 100 meters. Uh, that just gives you a good safety net. I mean, I don't know anyone that's going to take a 100 meter watch down to 100 meters, but you know, if you've got a 100 meter watch, you'll probably be more likely to take that snorkeling. This, I don't know that I'd necessarily want to take it to the beach. Three ATMs, so that's 30 meters. I mean, that's deep, right? I suppose you'd be okay. You could probably shower with this. This would be something good you could take to a gym, uh, what have you. Um, it has a bezel. That bezel does not move. Oh, I stand corrected. <laughs> I was not aware of that. Okay, I couldn't move it before. Pretty good clicks. I'll, I'll put that down at the bottom. It's pretty funny. I love it when I get shown up in my own videos by myself. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, it's a standard three hand, right? I mean, there's not much more to say about it. Good quality movement. Uh, so it, it's it's decent. It's a snap on snap on case. I've opened it up, you know, because you saw. Um, is it still? Oh, Jesus. There you go. <laughs> Look at me. I just noticed that this video is a mess. I apologize. Okay, it's good now. Um, yeah, there you go. Now it's now it's uh, three ATM. Now it's thirty meters. Uh, I don't know. Before, probably maybe five meters. <laughs> Point five ATM. There you go. All right, fixed it. Um, yeah. So I it it I actually really like the watch. I think it's really cool. They have some other models that are pretty fantastic, and I'll show a couple of them up here. Uh, and then I'll also, th this is available, I think in like six colors. So I'll also rotate through those as well. But um, I think it's a fun watch. Uh, unfortunately, there's no loom. I think I took a picture of it uh, and I put it up here. There's, there's a little, I mean, we can even try and see right now if you can see anything. No, there's nothing. They, um, when you saw the watches that I was filtering through the right, uh, they color code the hands with uh, the same color as the uh, as the strap so that's just a, it's just an max you know just a sort of a design feature nice solid 316 stainless uh, case um, just normal hardened metal crystal there's nothing too much about this I'll put the specs up here I think it might have been uh, sapphire coated but if it is I'll show that at the bottom you can see it's completely flat not uh, not beveled um, Overall, nice watch. Uh, I think, I mean, me personally, I'm not trying to be insulting. Uh, this would be something that I'd wear every day uh, if I was out, you know, mountain biking or if I was gonna take, you know, doing sports or even just mowing the lawn. Probably isn't something that I'd wear to work or with a, with a suit, but uh, still nice. All right, let's go ahead and do some measurements. I'm gonna get that out of the way. And then I'll, I'll measure, I'll weigh it. So, I think it's like a 43. Yep, 43. What's nice about this is that you can change the strap too if you want, because the case is designed that way. So 22, a lug and depth. I'm gonna say 12 or 11. 11, nice. Okay, and the lug to lug. is about 50 maybe, 48. 46, we'll say. Okay, not bad. All right, and I'll do the weight. All right, 80.5. We'll say 80, because I'm gonna take the tags off. Now, I think I paid, and I'll put it up there. I think I paid, my total cost was I think I got this from Watch Gang, and I'm, I'm pretty pleased with it, so I think uh, it was a good deal, right? You know, the question I always ask myself when I get a Watch Gang watch is, is it worth $100? And I would say with the movement you're getting, the silicon strap, um, I think I would say yes. I'd say this is definitely a $100 watch. Uh, hmm. So I think the MSRP, if I'm not mistaken, was like $399, $400. I'll put it down here at the bottom so you can see. Uh, but you know, obviously nobody ever pays MSRP for watches unless it's something like a Rolex or a Breitling. So I would probably say, what would I spend on this for this watch? If I saw this and and I needed a watch and I wanted something for the utility that this provides, I'd say $100 is a great deal. I got my money's worth. 
it feels like a $100, $150 watch. So if you were going to pay that price, I think you got a great deal. I don't think I would pay more than say $200 for this. I think $200 is still, you're in a decent price range. Uh, it's certainly worth it, but I wouldn't pay much more than that. So, all right, well, if you like this video and you like this watch, please let me know in the, in the comments. Uh, it's another new watch company that I have not touched yet. So until now, this is not screwed on crown by the way. Um, but also I really appreciate your subscription. Uh, it helps me keep the, um, my videos going. It's a goal. I want to reach a thousand. So I'm almost there. So really appreciate it. Thank you.